Yo, you're now in tune with the Lord Says Special on Shade 45. The Lord Says Special live. I have Andrea Rochelle in the building. Yes. <laughs> now, are you Jamaican this son? Yes, I am. My dad is Jamaican. Wait, turn, turn up a little. Turn up a little. Got a little Jamaica, <laughs> a little stack of music in the background. Say bum bum. Ah, wait. What well. top bum? Yeah, so I do you sing? you sing? I do. I'm not pursuing that right now because okay. I want to focus on acting. I don't have okay. any projects coming out, but I, I will have some later on in my career. Um, you did other shows. You did actors in other shows, but yeah. Power made you famous. You know, I really maximized that little role, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> I was like, I said, because I, as you know, Shorty's like, mm, he's going to get some because he ain't never got none. Nope, he hasn't. And you can find them with the lean and power. Yeah, she gives him a lot of good stuff. Oh, man. And you can tell you sitting on bed next to you, and he's sitting next to you, and he's like, I'm all <laughs> shivery and shit. I'm like, damn, Yeah, man. he's shy. At least hug her, kiss her or something. I'm pretty sure eventually that stuff happens, but I think she had to break him in. How did you feel? Did you ever do that to someone in real life? Like, not, I get nobody no lean, but someone to, like, to get close with, or they, like, nervous? You ever had someone nervous? Um, <laughs> like, like, also, like, I feel like damn. she was a little aggressive. Oh, okay. Because okay. she, at the party, she pulled him and led him into the bedroom. That's not really my character. Mm -mm. So I won't lead a guy into a bedroom, uh. you know, unless we're already dating and we're already committed no, and we're already yeah. having, you know, sex. Then I might, you know, be dominant in the bedroom from time to time. Mm -hmm. But, like, just to initiate conversation, I'm not going to drag someone from one point to another. That's not me. Okay. But I have been in something where, like, we were dating for a while, okay. and uh, he wanted to kiss me, and he was scared to kiss me. So I kind of said, I kind of said, like, he left. Yeah, yeah, or he yeah. started to turn and walk away, and he left. And I was just like, you can kiss me. And then he came back, and he turned around, and he was like, what? And I was just like, you wanted to kiss me. You had an opportunity to kiss me. Kiss me. So You told was, me. Yeah, I just said it out loud. I was like, kiss me. So, yeah. That'll be kind of weird for a dude to be like. Um, he was really shy. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no shy men. No. Mm -mm. Won't again. Never, never. Mm -mm. Never again. If I would knock a nigga out, shy dude. No, it's not even that. It's just like <laughs> they come with a, you. You realize that they're really sweet, very genuine, but mm -hmm. they come with many insecurities. It's true. It's many, true, many, so, many insecurities. And then with me pursuing a career like this, and yes. then I have many other goals, and mm -hmm. the attention that comes with it sometimes, I just feel like with shy people, they'll hold all their feelings in, and then they just blow up. And that'll mess you up. Like, with, uh, as you with projects and stuff you're doing, you're working. And, yeah, uh, and then I just feel like it's just so I'm very expressive. I'm very blunt. I'm very honest. I'm open. I'm transparent. I kind of put it all on the line. And, you know, the people in my, my close circle, they don't, they know that and they don't really question me. And so to be in that position where now I'm answering to somebody or to be in a position where now, you know, I have to always like tiptoe around your feelings, like that's something to me that I can't live with. You know, like my dad is someone who's really bold, and so mm -hmm. I just can't be with. Like, I I don't need someone who matches my energy. Oh right, right, right. <laughs> but right, right, I need right. a nice balance, you know. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, Jamaican is a Jamaican is a very <laughs> prideful, yes, dignified creature. Yes, yes. Did you did you smoke weed when you were little? No, I don't smoke. <laughs> I don't smoke. I don't drink. But my I dad. Know, Jamaican, <laughs> you know, like, did you have any Ray and Second nephews? Hand. No. <laughs> No, 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 Rhea nephews. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no. So, um, in the part in in power, mm -hmm. when they ask you, when they ask you to play that role, how did you feel? Um, are we talking about like before the audition or after I already booked it? The audition. So yeah, getting that in, I was really excited just because. It's power. So you want to audition mm -hmm. for power as an actress. Like right now, mm -hmm. it's one of the top shows. And for me, I didn't know it was as big as it was. I just knew it was a very good show. Oh, okay. So for me, it was just like, yeah, I want to do this. And then my mom knows how much I like the show. So uh -huh. she would always tell my manager, like, make sure you get my baby in the power. Make sure you get my... Uh -huh. Right. But there's like a whole bunch of other things that go along with it. Like you have to be SAG and... So I had to do another show first that like made me join SAG. And then once I did that, I got the audition for Power. And I was super excited because it was Power, but then I was really nervous because based off of the script, it seemed kind of similar to the character I had just played on The Deuce. 
And ah. so I was like, oh, man, am oh, I going to be typecasted? And, you know, like it was something that I was afraid of doing just because I didn't want people to keep seeing me as the same character or type of character. But I'm not dumb. So I went to the audition anyway. And then they really described this like young girl as like drop dead gorgeous and beautiful. Mm. And I was just like, you know, I'm beautiful, but I'm not, I'm probably not the type of beauty that they're looking for. I'm curvaceous. I have curly hair. My mm. hair's dark. My eyes are dark. Normally in Hollywood, mm. it's kind of like. Don't you real light? And bright for the camera. I'm light and bright. <laughs> That's what? They make you know what I mean? Like, you know, because they want now with cameras and commercials, you know, like, want you real light. Real they bright. do? I've been seeing a lot of I know like, a commercial, like, especially in print cur- commercials, they like, they like, the, the term is ethnically ambiguous. Like, you could be anything. You could be mm. a little Asian. You could be a little Spanish. You could be a little black. You could be a little white. They don't want too many I'm, dark I'm pretty people sure when saying. you look at me, you could tell yeah. that I'm black. <laughs> right, but, they, but so, on certain commercials, they don't want too many dark. You know, I be seeing like the... I get what you're saying. You're talking uh, about light skin. And, yeah. Like oh, that. I think that's changing now, luckily. I do think that a lot of dark skin women are being embraced now. And so I'm all here for that. All but right. yeah, just because I had the similar thinking, I thought it was Hollywood. So I thought they would want blonde hair, blue eyes, really skinny. And then mm. I know he goes to a prep school. So I just assumed that they were probably looking for, you know, someone who wasn't me. And I know my manager is really good at getting me into castings where they don't necessarily want my type. Mm-hmm. But because it's her or because it's me or because it's something I did previously, you know, they'll see me anyway. So I went in and I was just kind of like, I knew I wasn't going to get it. And then four days, maybe five days later, they called and my manager was like, you know, I have good news and bad news. And I was just like, oh, man. Uh, give me the bad news. And I, she was like, which one do you want? And I said, I want the bad news first. And then she said, the bad news is there is no bad news. And I was like, what? That doesn't make sense. Like, what? Mm. And then she was like, the good news is you booked power. And I was just like, oh, oh yay. Oh. So, yeah. So, and the part that you play, but in real life, were they hating on you? Like, No, I don't think. <laughs> when they saw it, they was like, why you do that? I don't think they were hating up? on me. I think people just like to... With power, it, the situations are so relatable that people, it they is. feel comfortable playing with it. It is. It so is. I think really they, they do that stuff, but I don't think any of it's truth. I think it's more so just having fun with the characters, having fun with the storyline. So they do hate, they be like, ah, oh, nah, she going to get knocked up. She going to trap him. She going to, you know, I saw uh, a lot of that the first yeah, episode. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. You can tell like, he ain't never had nothing. So he's just like, yeah. You made him drink the lean. And then a lot of people thought that I was with Kanan and that it was a setup with Kanan. Oh, that's right. Right, that's but that's right. not how it was. So after the oh. Yeah, so after the first episode, everyone had something to say that was negative. They was like, nah, F her and they went in. Mm-hmm. But then as the storyline progressed and they saw me back in nine, it was like I can't believe she got him killed. Like she did this on purpose. Uh, and then the ten came. They was like, "Oh, she didn't mean it." Yeah. So, after yeah. a while. Yeah. Now the um transition from stars to HBO. Was there any conflict, or was there like you know? I did HBO first. Cool. Sure. A lot of people don't know that because HBO's a deuce is, is out now, but it came out after Power, and uh-huh. so. It was pretty easy because okay. I did HBO first, and HBO was um, a longer shoot time. Well, I guess they kind of were the same months-wise, but because I had such a shorter role in power, okay. I guess um, what made it long was the breaks in between, not really necessarily the shooting. Whereas with HBO, I did a lot of actual, I did, I had a lot of that actual time on set. Um, but I would say that the chemistry, the vibe, and the environment is kind of the same. Like, everyone was welcoming. Everyone's professional. Everyone's on their job. They're on their point. It wasn't really too much to adjust to from one to another. I was just happy I got to do power because it was modern clothing. It was modern. Yeah. Difference with, from? With the Deuce. The Deuce is 70s. So if anyone yeah. doesn't know about the Deuce, it's an HBO um, dramatic series coming out. Well, it just came out. Yeah. Uh, starring James Franco, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Um, Good actors and people from The Wires in it, too. Yeah. So Method mm-hmm. Man, you have Lawrence Black Gillard. Song, yeah, yeah, Black Yeah. yeah so uh. it's a nice big ensemble. And it's about the rise of the porn industry in the 70s. Yeah, but now, now let's talk about that. You know, it's where the, the I was transition. trying to ignore that. But, but <laughs> when they watch it, they go, no, like the transition from that. And like, it was ill, you know. You Of course you wasn't born in the 70s. But mm-hmm. how did you adapt, like, with the acting? Because it's like, it was kind of hard, like, back then. They were wilding out, you know, like, yeah. 42nd Street. It was just... My character is coming from the South. 
She's coming from the South, the deep South. She has this strong Southern drawl. And she's in 42nd. She's on 42nd Street because she's chasing something. She's following behind some girl. And she's hoping that she's made the right decision. But eventually she finds out that she's a little you know, out of place, overwhelmed, and things are way more serious than she thought thought they would be. Uh-huh. Um, the costumes, the music, yeah. the makeup, the hair, yeah. <laughs> that was an adjustment. That was a big <laughs> adjustment. But I really appreciated it. I got to see, because the set was done so well that I didn't know, like I'm finding out now, that a lot of the garbage and the dust, the, dust, the dirt, the papers, everything... Yeah. It was added to the scene just for this series. It wasn't how 42nd was. So mm-hmm. when we were actually shooting, I was kind of grossed out. I was like, oh, my God, it's so dirty. Do they have to do it right here? <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, now yeah. I know better. Now I'm like, oh, okay. In the 70s, it was just way dirtier than it is now. Yeah, it was like, it's hard. You can tell it was hard to play those parts, though. And, like, really. I don't feel like I was playing a part. Like, it wasn't about being in the 70s and that yeah. for, for me. For me, it was just about being a young girl who happens to be from the, and I have a lot of family from the south on my mom's side mm. just we're all over the south so for me it's very easy to just put myself in a slower you know type of mentality mm-hmm. um, and just take everything with a little bit more ease and gradually but I wasn't trying to be in the 70s I wasn't really focused on how are they in the 70s mm-hmm. it was more so what influenced mm, my thoughts Mm. What would be those influences in my in, in my thoughts? I should say like music and you know current events mm. and really just finding a reason why my character wanted to escape. Not really judging her, not really trying to be any one thing, just being a human and really just going off of that. Power, the deuce, yes. law and order. <laughs> now that's so ill. Is it? Yeah, this is Thank the, you. the lawn. Or- I've been really blessed. My stories, they sound really crazy and really like made up, but they really happen. I mean, with Law and Order, I, I got an audition last minute. Mm-hmm. And the audition, I didn't really think too much about it because it was so last minute. So when I went in, I really had fun. And they asked mm-hmm. me to improv. And I really feel like my improv is what got me the role because I did the mm-hmm. scene and the scene was so simple that I just felt like... How are you gonna naturally be able, like yeah, yeah like how are you gonna pick someone off of this like this is so mm. short that everyone can do it so well but then they asked to do the improv and my character was someone who was kind of unfortunately gay bashing another oh. person who's in a very serious situation who, who's being jumped who's being bullied who's oh, being harassed shit. at a bridge and so my character she's ignorant and she's just belligerent and she's just yelling out slurs but because I wasn't really yeah. thinking and I was kind of put on the spot because no one told me to expect to do improv I just kind of said the first things that I thought she would say like being young and dumb yeah. and it was very um a curse. A uh, challenging. It sounds challenging. Like, it wasn't challenging. It was more so yeah. like normally h- had I had time to think about it, I probably would have tried to be a little bit more politically okay, correct. Yeah, and yeah. this time I wasn't. I was completely like just just disrespectful. And that's mm. what they like. They like the freedom that I had with it. And so they called me back. And then after my call back, um, everyone started clapping. And I kind of knew, like, even if I didn't mm. get it for, like, whatever other reason, my acting was really well. My improv was really well, well, and they liked that. And then the next day I got a call back. I mean, the next day I got the, the call that I got the part. So, yeah. You started, was you a dancer? You started, like, dancing. Yeah. Uh, that, so, the dancing to acting. Yeah. How did you, you That's know. actually pretty easy. It's not that hard. Like, no, why don't you go back to, you know, talking about going to dance and do a running man, do like House what? Party 8, you know? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, any, uh, we Got Served? <laughs> no. Maybe an original dance movie, but those um, remakes and those yeah, continuations, they just get cheesier and cheesier. Did they ever ask you to do any of those roles back um, back then when I was actually dancing, no, because I didn't have the management, the agents that I, and just the team that I have now. Um, it was after Law and Order that I changed my management, that I changed my um, agency, and I really just went on a whim. Something crazy happened, and I found the management and the team that I have now. And so now I'm auditioning for those roles, which is really weird because it's like, oh, I've been trying to do this for forever. And wow. now, you know, now I'm here and I'm at a point where 
they're seeing me in those rooms. But when I was an actual dancer, when I was doing choreography, choreography yeah. like 24 <laughs> 7 i wasn't yeah. in those rooms because i didn't have the resources so what you doing now coming up um i just did a pilot the pilot's called for the love of music it's about ty powell who is a a woman who went through the foster care system in the 80s 90s and she had a crazy story and throughout everything that she went through being in the foster care system um oh, she was able to break into the music industry and she okay. became a stage manager um a production assistant um an executive assistant and she's now working within the community for other students and youth who wish to do the same thing but just her story being so powerful i was really excited to be a part of that um we just finished about i want to say three weeks ago the yeah. longest the shortest maybe two weeks ago and um yeah i'm just excited about that i'm auditioning just okay. finished doing a self-tape so yeah i'm just enjoying <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be back on power or, um... um that would make sense well, of course, you know. That would make a lot of sense. Yes, yes, yes. Will you be having the same part or like how are you going to? If I was brought back, I think I would be having the same part because it would be weird. So many people know me as Destiny now, right? Yeah, so. yeah. And the street of hate Destiny. Yeah, they like, do. Destiny. <laughs> I was in the car and um, we were at a light and my, my window was down because I was checking my makeup or whatever. And someone saw me and noticed me. And this was in the middle of, I think, one of the... The videos have had gone viral online, so the shade room had reposted, and all these other media outlets started posting it. And someone, because I guess like I was currently like on every feed, um, was like, "Hey yo, yeah!" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Because <laughs> it's been a while since I heard like that type of shout out. And it was like, "Destiny, I see you, I see you." And I was just like, "Oh wow, that's crazy!" And then like I turned to the people in the car, and they were like, "Did you know that guy?" And I was just like. No, never. not at all. Yeah, not at all. Never seen them a day in my life. So things like that have been happening. Andrea, I'd like to thank you for coming through. Thank you. <laughs> and, and shout it out. Shout out. Um, you have an IG or anything? Or oh yeah, my out? Instagram. You guys can follow me on is um I am Andrea Rachel I A M A N Z R E A R A C H E L and then my Twitter is Andy Ray. So it's A N D double I underscore R A E.